Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back. We have with us again Stephen Campbell, the Brain Whisperer. How are you doing, Steve? I'm doing good. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's always great to have you, Steve. Um, Thank you. We've been talking in the last few sessions. You, you mentioned over and over again self-talk, what, what we say to ourselves and mm. uh, how our brain just believes it. You know, it doesn't say if, whether it's right or wrong, good or bad. It just accepts it. So when you have negative, if you're, if, if you're one of those people who just naturally sees the dark side of things or the difficult side of things, and, and you're, I'll call it negative as mm -hmm. opposed to being optimistic. Yeah. How do you, how do you change your self-talk if it naturally wants to be negative self-talk? Well, let me share with you a couple of principles that we'll use as a foundation for that, and then I'll show you the steps to do it. The first principle that I always use when I talk to people is this, and I'll say it really slowly so you don't miss it. While you're talking to yourself, and we talk to ourselves all day long, your brain, ready? I'll say this slowly. Your brain is believing everything you tell it without question, no arguments. And this is from a work called a, um, Phantoms in the Brain by Dr. V.S. Ram v. Ramachandran out of UC San Diego. Phantoms refer to phantom limbs that have been amputated. And a patient might go into a doctor's office, he'll say, oh, you got to help me. I can't do a thing with my arm. And the doctor may say, well, that could be because I cut off that arm six months ago. And the patient says, well, you didn't tell my brain that. My brain still thinks it's there. My brain wants to pick things up with it. And sometimes it gets itchy and achy. So the brain doesn't care whether what you're saying is true or not. Now, let's go to the next step. We are constantly talking to ourselves all day long. From when we first look in the mirror to when we go to bed at night. And your brain's believing it all. Okay. Now, unfortunately... And this is from a book called What to Say When You Talk to Yourself by Dr. Chad Helmstetter, printed back in, in the 1980s. Most of what we say to ourselves is negative. That's a trait in all of us. And I don't care if you're a positive person or not. Most of what we say to ourselves is negative. Let me illustrate. I use PowerPoint. So let's imagine that I bring up a slide that's completely white totally white, except for one little black dot in the left-hand left corner. What are you going to be looking at? Not the white screen, the black dot. That's what we do to ourselves. We lock on to the negative crap. What I do is I make people aware of that. And I say to them, you know what? you can replace that viewpoint. Notice I didn't say change. Why don't I use the word change when I'm dealing with how we think? Because the brain hates change. As soon as you use the word change, it gets all upset and all uptight. It doesn't like change. It wants you to be why? Because change involves a risk. Change involves something different. And your brain's job is to keep you safe. And change means that maybe something will not be safe. So as soon as you see the brain, as soon as the brain says change, it just gets all uptight. So let's not use the word change. Let's use the word replace. Why? Because the brain may hate change, but it loves to create new stuff. Loves to create new stuff. So right now, I'm creating a model of the Nautilus from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Other people create new cars. Other people create all these more <laughs> things because the brain loves to create new stuff. So we are going to replace the negative stuff with positive statements about ourselves. Dr. Shad Helmstetter observes that it makes absolutely no difference who, what, where, why, and how you are. 
It makes no difference what you believe about yourself today. It makes no difference what has been tossed in your lap. What the difference is, is what you are saying to yourself about yourself right now. Your feelings about yourself aren't coming from how you were raised. They're not coming from events in your life. They're not coming from what you look like. They're coming from what you say about how you were raised. What you believe about events in your lives. What you believe about how you look. And the most exciting discovery in psychology is that you can learn to replace what you're saying. So let me give an example. My brain and I didn't like each other for the first 40 years of my life. I'm 73, so more than half of my life, my brain and I were enemies. We hated each other. I didn't like me. My brain didn't like me. We just didn't get along. And I, in that time, thought that I was just as worthly as I was as worthless as the log, and I was really stupid, especially with math. I just thought I was really dumb in math, and I was, because that's what I said to myself. But in the 70s, even before the Apple, I discovered computers. And I found the computers and I really got along. In fact, I really thought they were fun. And I began tinkering around with them. Eventually, I went back to school. I got a graduate degree in information technology from the University of San Francisco. And I found myself teaching classes on computers and really enjoying it. And one day, the dean came to my office and said, one of our math professors just quit. So you are our new math professor. <clears throat> Wait a minute, I, you don't understand. I can't do numbers. I can't do math. He said, you want a job? Learn. There's the book. Next semester, you're teaching math. Well, I needed the job, so I ran down to the Rona Park Library, picked up all of the books I could on How the Brain Learns. That's how this started back in the 70s. How the brain learns, how it works, how we think, etc. And I began teaching my math class based on brain-based learning. And students began saying, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you're such a good math teacher. And the dean said, all the students say, I will only take math if Mr. Kellen is my professor. Here's what I began doing. Even though I had been saying you're really dumb in math, when that message came up, I said, no. Math is really fun. Algebra is just a puzzle that you put together and you solve. Calculus is the same thing. So is trig. So is everything else. It's just puzzles that you can put together and solve. And this is really fun. It was so fun, I ended up writing two college textbooks. And what do you think? Software and math. Here's the point. I became aware of the negative messages I was giving myself. And I just said to myself, wait a minute. I am the boss. My brain listens to me. And it believes everything I tell it. So I began saying, Steve, math is really fun. You're really good at this. In fact, you're really good at a lot of other stuff. And you know what happened? I began liking myself. I began saying, wow, you're really smart. You're amazing. I've already written my fourth book. What happened? Nothing magical. I simply made a decision. I chose to be positive. What happens when you screwed up? You know what I do? I simply use three words the next time. The next time I'll do it this way or that way. And when you say the next time, you're saying three things. Number one, you're saying there is a next time. How many next times do we get? As many as we want. Number two, when you say the next time, you're saying I'll never give up. And number three, when you say the next time, 
you're saying I'm still learning, which means I'm still making mistakes. And sometimes I'm even failing. But just because I fail doesn't mean I'm a failure. And the whole time while I'm saying this, you know what my brain is doing? It's rewiring itself. And it's believing me. And now my brain and I have become the best of friends. The title of my third book was going to be Making Your Mind Your Mentor. They changed it, but I like my title better. A mentor is someone who sees more in you than you see in yourself. That's what your brain can become. Wow. And it all starts, it all starts with what you say to yourself, That's your right. self-talk. That's right. That's right. Your and brain if you can change your self-talk, yep, you change your self-talk consciously. That's right. You say to yourself, wait, I shouldn't be saying that. I should That's be right. saying this. That's right. Because and then you say it. Because your brain believes what you tell it. That's right. And you keep saying it, the brain, the brain rewires itself so that you don't even have to think about it anymore. You don't even have to, oh, you know, it doesn't come. And then all of those negative stuff becomes positive to where the pandemic and I was really fun. It's an adventure, but I didn't know what Zoom was 12 months ago. <laughs> now I'm speaking all over the world in my office and meeting wonderful people like you. And we have never met in person. We probably never will. But we have such oh, a close, that. loving relationship. But we're talking to ourselves all the time. All the time. Yeah. So we, the first step, I think, is to pay attention to what we're saying to pay ourselves. Pay attention. Pay attention yes. to our self-talk. That's right. That's right. And recognize it for whether it's positive, negative, or whether it's supporting what we really want to do, or whether it's not supporting what That's we right. really want to do. Let and change it. Another, let me tell you another story, a really quick story that illustrates this. My wife was an elementary school principal. She told me one morning, because I get up so I'll, she told me one. I got to tell you what happened this morning. Uh, what happened? I woke up and she said, I, I said to myself, I'm going to have the worst day because I'm going to have to deal with this parent at 830 this morning. I'm just going to have the worst day in the world. She's been coming to my seminars for years. And she said to myself, wait a minute. No way. So she said, I got out of my bed and took my principal position when she talks to a kid, except she talked to her brain. And she said, OK. We're not going to have a bad day. We're going to have one of the best. And she said, Steve, I swear I saw my brain kind of ethereally bobbing in front of me and the eyes got really big. <laughs> and it said, oh, OK, I'll look for ways to make it great. And then the one the parent never showed up, which is wonderful. And she said, I had one of the best days I've had in months. And it came with my telling my brain, I'm the boss and my brain said yes you are i have a quick question though yeah. did they ever find the body of that <laughs> parent <laughs> not sure okay i want to meet your wife she's got a way of handling stuff she's something else she's something <laughs> yeah. else i tell you when i first saw her i went a little bit crazy because she's really here's a picture of her and she's Hold just up. really bring it back, bring it back. Oh, back. Yeah. There you go. And there you go. That's Mary. Well, hi, Mary. Hi, Mary. Yeah, see her. yeah. And she is so she's just I mean, I look at her now and she's 10 times prettier than she was 50 years ago when I first met her. So there you go. And so are you. You are oh, you're thank 10 you. times prettier than when she met you. Yeah. <laughs> Well, but more important great. than pretty, yeah. more important than pretty is you are a wonderful help to a lot of people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's exciting stuff. I never expected this. I never, never expected this. I started doing this in senior centers, all free of charge. And people got really excited. And then people began paying me. Then people said, where's your book? Where's your book? What book? Don't you have a book? Yeah, I have a book on software. No, 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 no. You have to write the book. I never expected this. I'm blown away. And now I travel around the world. I just got back from India a year ago, and, and they're paying me for this. Who know, Who would have known? 
Wonderful. Who would have known? Yeah. Well, yeah. Our, that's our benefit as well. So we're glad that you finally stopped believing yourself talk and then started <laughs> believing yourself talk. So and then we, have, we now have the Brain Whisperer as a regular contributor. And Thank you. Both we and our audience are all the better for it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.